So you have a website, but it's not converting as well as you want it to. In today's video, I'm going to go over some ways that you can identify what's working and what's not working on your website to make improvements and hopefully increase your conversion rate. Hello, if you're new here, my name is Kinsey. I am the brand and web designer behind Kinsey Green Design. And if you're not new, as always, so happy you're back. So first off, let's talk about the purpose of having a website. Typically, every single business has a website because it acts as not only an informational resource for their target audience, but has some sort of goal in mind, whether it be to get somebody to purchase a product, enroll in a course, or inquire about services. Your website should act as a guide that gets your website visitor from point A to point B. And point B is the end goal, the end result that you want from that person landing on your website and traveling through it like a guide. Before we get into identifying what's not working on your current website and what could be improved upon, I want to go over some basic website anatomy, because if you don't have this basic anatomy or this basic foundation laid out for your website, you're already going to be behind. The biggest thing that I see people lack on their websites is not having a good informational brand mission statement above the fold. Now, what is above the fold? Above the fold means the area in which people view as soon as they land on your website. There should be some type of brand mission statement there that lets them know what your website is about, why they should continue scrolling through it, and what you have to offer. Now, I'm gonna give an example of a bad brand mission statement versus a good brand mission statement. A bad brand mission statement would be something like, trendy bags for women who want to be fashionable. This this is a bad brand mission statement because it is extremely generic and can be applied to all sorts of businesses. Your brand mission statement should be very specific and unique to your business and really speak to the purpose of your brand. A good brand mission statement would be eco-friendly handmade bags for women who want to look fashionable while taking care of our environment. That's a good brand mission statement because it speaks to the core purpose of the brand. It explains why people should continue scrolling through the website and potentially support that business as well as what they have to offer. Somewhere around your brand mission statement should also be a call to action. This is something that a lot of times people also miss. This button, this call to action is acting as a guide. Like I said in the beginning, your website should guide the user from point A to point B. Below the area above the fold should be some sort of service or product introduction with links or buttons to those exact things. Again, a lot of people miss this and this can heavily increase your conversion rate. And right below that is typically a section where you talk more about the brand's purpose or the founder behind the brand and how you serve your customers or clients with another call to action. Again, call to actions are very important. You don't wanna overdo them, but you also want to make sure they are frequently seen throughout your website. And as you continue scrolling, you'll oftentimes see testimonials or reviews. And then another section for other service offerings, valuable things that you offer to your target audience. And then you have your footer, which I always recommend embedding an Instagram feed into. That's a really common thing now. And it's just an immediate, beautiful way to showcase social proof. This is obviously just a super, super basic website wireframe anatomy. Your website should obviously be a lot more visually intriguing and probably have a few more sections than this but this is the basic foundational groundwork that your website should contain. All right, now let's talk about how to identify what's working and what's not working on your current website. If you don't follow me on other socials, you may not know this, but I recently redesigned my entire website. And one of the biggest things that helped me determine what I wanted to add and what I wanted to remove or keep was Google Analytics. If your website is not connected to Google Analytics, I highly recommend setting that up ASAP because Google Analytics will tell you a lot about the behavior of your target audience once they get to your website. Once we're inside of my Google Analytics account, you can see not only how many page views I'm getting and which page those page views are on, but you can also see what devices these pages are being viewed from. 
Now, to get even more specific and learn a lot more about how people are behaving once they get to my website, I can go over here and click behavior and then hit behavior flow. This basically shows what is happening once somebody actually gets to my link and bio page I have on social media, what they click next, and then where they go from there. So as you can see, the majority of people go to my link and bio page, they hit my services button, and then they go to my contact form. And that is exactly what I want to happen. Obviously, I have spent quite a while perfecting this and being a web designer, I knew exactly how to set this up to get the best results. But if you don't have Google Analytics set up yet, set this up, go look at the behavior flow. And if things aren't working as well as they could, and the majority of people visiting your website aren't getting from point A to point B fast enough, there may be things that you can simplify or improve to help increase the likelihood of getting the outcome you would like. In addition to looking at your Google Analytics and gathering behavioral data that way, you can also just ask around and be mindful of questions that people have asked you in the past to formulate new ways to improve your website. For example, when I had my previous website, I would get a lot of questions about my brand identity package and if I just did one-off logos and if people working with me had to start from scratch or not and a few other questions like that. I took note of that. So on my new website, on my services page, I now have a small FAQ section answering some of those common questions. This is why it's really important to pay attention to your target audience and keep note of the things that they ask you and the problems that they often face. Now I want to give you guys a quick look at my old website and then I'm gonna show you my new website so you can see how I formulated ways to improve the old website and how I actually implemented those ideas. So first off, as you can see, I have the brand mission statement, I have the call to action, even have like a little freebie sign up up there. But something that I actually really disliked about this website itself was that there wasn't enough animation. As we're moving into 2022 and in the future, it's important to research upcoming trends and things that are going on within the web to make sure your website is evolving with the design changes happening in our world. And as of this year, animation has seen a lot. And something I really knew I wanted to implement on my new website was more animation and effects. Another thing that I didn't like about my old website was that my social links were not obvious. As in, I had them linked right here in a really random spot, and I don't think a lot of people noticed them. So I knew on my new website, I wanted to put them in a very prominent place. One of the things I did, however, like about my old website was the fact that I had a contact form on my homepage. When I received a lot of inquiries, I noticed that a lot of those inquiries actually came from the contact form listed on my homepage. Again, this is going back to being mindful of how people are interacting with your brand, the things they're saying to you, and how they're getting in touch with you so that you can improve things in the future. Now I'm gonna share with you guys my brand new website going into 2022. As you can see here, as soon as you land on it, there's some animation happening. And if we click my menu, there is all of my social links. That goes back to what I just said about I wanted more animation and I wanted my social links to be prominent and that was one of the first things I implemented. In addition, I have parallax images. I also have testimonials here with little arrows that people can click if they wanna see more and the testimonials auto rotate, which I really, really like because again, I didn't have that on the old website. This setup is also very similar to the old website, but it's been enhanced again through some of those touch points I talked about earlier. And as you can see, here's my Instagram, more animation, and lots of different call to action. So if you guys wanna look more at my new website, the link is in the description as always. Before I wrap this video up, I want to leave you guys with some final few tips. Number one, please be consistent with your brand colors and your brand fonts. As a brand designer, I cannot stress the importance 
enough of having a brand identity to create a really solid, effective website. A lot of people just start out with a logo and colors, which is fine. But if you don't have some set guidelines you're following, building your website is gonna be really tough because you want consistency throughout your social media, your website, your branding, and all of your visuals everywhere. Another big tip I have is make things simple and just give your target audience enough information. As in, don't give them too much information to the point where they're overwhelmed, but don't give them too little information to the point where they don't know if they want to purchase from you or reach out or complete the desired end result you have for your website. And my last tip, please make a custom link in bio page to use on social media. Stop using Linktree, Milkshake, Canva, whatever else other third parties are out there. I've talked about this in another video. If you have your own website, you can make your own link in bio page, again, to better track your audience behavior through your Google Analytics and just create something that's really branded and custom to your business. When you're making this link in bio page, you also want to just have a few select buttons on that page. Another big mistake I see people make with their link in bio pages is that they have a crap ton of buttons and it overwhelms people to the point where they don't even know what to click or where to go next. When you're creating your link in bio page, make sure it is simple and it's acting as a guide so people can click it and find exactly what they need to get from point A to point B. That is it for today's video. If you found this helpful, please do give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you in the next one.